Hello everyone, welcome to the Addis Trading Platform channel. In this video, we're diving into the volume profile, the logic that can be used when applying it, and the main formations that need to be tracked. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you're staring at the chart, unsure if a reversal has occurred? One of the most reliable ways to identify a reversal or current trend is through the volume profile. If you're not familiar with this tool, it aggregates the trades of buyers and sellers at each price level within the selected range. The volume profile can be used to track different things, for example, signs of weakness from major buyers and sellers, areas of the true value of the instrument, future intentions of buyers and sellers to make trades, whether buyers and sellers consider the value area important, areas where buyers and sellers will suffer losses. But perhaps the most crucial aspect is that volume profile enables us to categorize different market participants into groups and understand their actions. By analyzing this data, we can paint a more accurate picture of what's happening. Volume Profile is a great tool for market analysis for Day traders, who execute trades within a single day. Position traders, who hold trades for two days or longer. Medium-term traders, who keep trades open for two weeks or more. Each instrument has a price and the true value. The main difference between these concepts lies in the fact that the price indicates the current value of the asset, which fluctuates every second or minute. The true value, on the other hand, is determined by a large number of market participants and is reflected in the profile as significant volume. In other words, the price reflects the short-term sentiment of market participants, and we can assess their current mood relative to the true value of the asset. True value is established through a balance agreed upon by buyers and sellers. This happens when the price stays within a range where buyers and sellers execute their trades over an extended period. In the example, these value zones are marked by blue rectangles in the left and right profiles. When the price moves out of balance, it means that one side of the established value zone has rejected the price. At that point, the price is in a state of imbalance, seeking a new value area. In such zones, large positions can also be formed before trends, as large capital faces its own challenge of accumulating a position at an acceptable price. This can be achieved by holding the price within a range for an extended period. Based on this assumption, I consider the balance zones of the volume profile to be areas where there should be open interest primarily from major market participants. Let's discuss the main concepts that form the basis of working with the profile. Areas of the true instrument's value. Usually, in these areas, the price remains stable for an extended period and can't break out of the range. Neither buyers nor sellers are able or willing to leave this zone for an extended period. Both reasons indicate that someone finds it advantageous to trade within this range. However, if nobody finds it beneficial and the price remains within the range due to the absence of aggressive participants, the volumes in the profile will not be extreme. By using an additional filter in the profile settings, you can specify the volume value and highlight areas with presumed true value in a different color. Unlike the range of the true value, the current price can be manipulated by false breakouts that will mislead traders. It is also important to understand the significance attributed to each zone by both buyers and sellers. By comparing waves to each other and comparing volume spikes within one wave, you can determine the price levels where the most active battles took place. You can also understand which waves are secondary and which ones are more important. In the example, there are six waves in the downtrend. The first wave established the trend, marking its beginning. In the middle of this wave, we can see a fierce battle for control over this zone. The second wave was weaker compared to the first, and its upward movement ended during the testing of the key zone, which was under the seller's control. The third zone was an attempt to continue the trend, but there was no intense battle within it. The fourth zone once again acted as a correction, with signs of great struggle emerging around the high in the form of isolated yellow profile levels. This means that the battle became more intense. The fifth zone was again an unsuccessful attempt without major battles and the sixth wave revealed a new true zone. Traders fiercely fought for control over it before the trend continued downward. This pattern is not a universal template for trend development but rather one example of how comparing waves can help identify which prices trades are fighting for and which zones they will try to protect. Another benefit of the profile is that it reveals signs of weakness from major buyers and sellers. Consequently, it also identifies the areas where buyers and sellers will face losses. Since exchange trading is anonymous, we can't identify which trades belong to large or small traders except by their volume size. 
However, the use of robots disguises large trades by breaking them down into smaller ones. By analyzing the battle for control, we can identify zones where significant positions may be held, who is losing money, and who is profiting. With this information, we can identify areas with a market reversal and trend FT, as well as pinpoint the best prices for opening positions with minimal risk and maximum potential. In this example, the zone of the true asset value was the best place to look for selling opportunities. During its testing, another struggle for control occurred. Subsequently, there was a breakdown, confirming the defeat of buyers. In this example, we see how the buyer lost control over the price after an upward movement. After the struggle in the yellow zone, there were positions held by both buyers and sellers and judging by the size, there were large market participants as well. The first downward impulse exposed the buyer's weakness, while the seller got a taste of profit and maintained control over the price. This example and the previous models are fundamental patterns in market analysis. All price movements are built around these models. We'll delve deeper into the potential developments and behaviors next. Let's explore different variations of common price behavior and volume profile patterns. The majority of price movements can be attributed to one of these models. In the first example, you see a classic trend model. The market is rising and finds a new true value, followed by position formation and continued upward movement. Corrections come in various types, you can learn more about them in the first video about market phases. Nonetheless, in corrections, a new value zone is formed. Sometimes, the volume may be lower when the trend is strong and corrections are short-lived. If you spot a trend model, trend trading can lead to impulsive movements, enabling fast and significant earnings. The second model is a reversal pattern. I consider it the most promising because it provides an opportunity to find an entry point at the beginning of a new trend. However, when you look for an entry point in trade patterns with a tight stop loss, there is a risk of incurring several losses in a row before a profitable movement. This model involves a prior downtrend. As the movement unfolds, selling positions are established, pushing the price down. During one of these movements from volumes, a price halt occurs, followed by a breakout in volume to the upside. The final downward impulse before a breakout often appears as tails on breakout candles, indicating weakness in the trend. The primary sign of a reversal is when the price moves from the positive zone to the seller's negative zone in the case of a downtrend. The situation is the opposite for an uptrend. Reversal patterns can occur with or without a significant volume divergence, so it's not always possible to enter a position at a favorable price on the pullback. However, reversal patterns are easily broken during strong trends. In this example, we see an uptrend with strong volume at the bottom. In the upper frame, intermediate volume is forming. From this point, an upward impulse towards the trend emerges, but then the volume gets broken. At the moment of the breakout, it looks like a classic short reversal setup. However, to avoid falling into this trap, you need to see the bigger picture of the uptrend. In other words, if you don't see a significant volume formed, roughly equal to or greater than the previous one, counter-trend setups carry a high risk, and it's better to ignore them to avoid falling into a trap. The third model is also a reversal pattern, but the reversal volume forms differently. In the previous scenario, the last downward move could be considered false. In this example, after the downward impulse from the volume, the price doesn't break it right away but starts forming a new one. After the formation of the new volume, the price may continue trending downward. However, if you see an upward impulse, it's a sign of a reversal. This model is more complex than the previous one because there are additional factors here that may prevent the reversal from quickly unfolding. In this example, the upward impulse from the new volume broke through the core of the previous volume, which is a good signal for further upward movement. But if it hadn't been broken, the risk of another downward movement would increase. We would have a battle between the previous seller and the new buyer. Either of them could win. In our case, the buyer won by breaking through the previous volume and continuing the new uptrend. The fourth model may appear to be a reversal, but it often turns out to be a deep correction. Its peculiarity lies in the fact that the price stops at the high of the uptrend or the low of the downtrend and begins to form volume. Unlike the classic setup, this volume lacks an upward impulse before moving downward. If you don't see a false breakout after the formation of the upper volume and the price immediately starts moving down, remember that there may be a battle between the two volumes. If this occurs within an uptrend, there's a good chance the upward movement will continue. 
And don't forget to monitor the transition from a trend to a flat market, as shown in the example. When the market starts trading within a wide range, the rules of the game change. Before the flat, you expected that the extremum would be broken in the direction of the trend and you would get a big profit. During the flat, you should anticipate smaller profits and rebounds from the extremes. For example, if you are using certain patterns to enter the market for trend trading, they may start resulting in consecutive losses within a flat market. The key to success lies in recognizing this in time and either halting trading during the flat phase or adjusting your trading rules for this period. That concludes the first part about volume profile. In the next video, we will continue examining the price development sequence and your possible actions. We will also finish the analysis with two examples from the previous video about market phases, using volume profile. Don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment. It will help other traders discover the video on YouTube.